This summer, NASA finally presented the world with the first images of the new James Webb Space Telescope. As soon as the images were online, they triggered worldwide discussions. In the hustle and bustle, some images were completely lost, or NASA did not even show them. Among the images that were withheld from the public were some brand new images of the gas giant Jupiter. In this video, we'll show you why the images of Jupiter were initially kept secret by NASA and what milestone they represent in the exploration of space. Before we start, we would like to ask you to support our work. You can do that by subscribing to our channel right now, activating the notification bell, and giving us a like at the end of the video if you enjoyed the post. We'll now take a look at the unique images of Jupiter and then explore why the James Webb Telescope will completely change the world of astronomy. Secret Images of Jupiter These images of Jupiter were not initially released by NASA at all. We naturally wonder why that is, and if there is anything about these images that needed to be kept secret. In fact, these images are very special images, made specifically for a project at the University of California at Berkeley and a cooperating group of scientists in Paris. The James Webb Space Telescope is a joint project of NASA, the Canadian Space Agency, and the Europeans. The participating nations and space agencies mutually agree on which projects the telescope will be used for. A plan is already in place for this, with the next two years fully booked. That NASA withheld these images of Jupiter from the public simply had to do with the fact that the images are very special and were probably not considered as interesting and exciting as the other first images taken by James Webb. Curious people who viewed the official report on the launch of the telescope on NASA's website found these images there. The images show the gas giant through special filtering techniques that can make things visible that the human eye cannot perceive. Seen in the two images are the planet itself and three of its innermost moons. The image on the left was taken at short wavelengths using an F212N filter, the stands for the 2.12 micrometers. The second image is a long wavelength image. An F323N filter was used, which highlights light with a wavelength of 3.23 micrometers. The filtering not only allows the comparatively tiny moons to be shown in clear contrast, but Jupiter's ring system is also visible on the narrowband image. The discovery of this ring system was not that long ago. In the 1970s, the Voyager spacecraft delivered the first images showing the fine rings. Unlike its neighbor Saturn, they consist of such fine dust that they can hardly be seen from Earth with normal telescopes. Thanks to the near-infrared camera NearCam, James Webb can detect the smallest particles as well as fast-moving objects. The precursor telescope Hubble, for example, could only do this to a limited extent. Hubble's images of small or fast-moving objects near Earth were blurred due to the focal length of the mirrors. James Webb's light filtering, on the other hand, now allows scientists to visualize a comet or asteroid that might be in front of the Sun or another brightly shining celestial body such as Venus or Jupiter. This makes James Webb of great importance for tracking near-Earth objects and comets in the future, which significantly increases safety for us on Earth. NASA officially stated in its report on the two images, observing a bright planet and its satellites and rings was judged to be problematic because stray light can affect the science instrument used, but also because the fine guidance sensor, FGS, must track guide stars near the bright planet. It went on to say, these observations confirm the expectation that the detection of guide stars will work correctly as long as Jupiter is at least 140 inches away from the FGS. In plain English, this means that James Webb is setting new standards for observing bright and small objects in the star system. Thus, the light filtering technique is already meeting all expectations at the beginning of the mission. Jupiter's ring system is of great interest to the researchers. So far, it's unclear whether rings like these form over time and whether the rings have existed since the planet's early days. Scientists have found evidence for both theories in neighbor Saturn. Some of Saturn's rings, which unlike Jupiter's also carry larger chunks of rock, are very old, while others are more recent. 
the outermost very fine ring of Saturn, which also cannot be seen with the naked eye from Earth, is fed by Saturn's moon Enceladus, according to the latest findings. On this moon, there is ice volcanism and the ring is formed by finely atomized ice and water particles from Enceladus. Another exciting question is how the moons of the two gas giants were formed. James Webb's images show Jupiter's moons, Metis, Europa, and Thebe. Metis was discovered in 1979 and is the innermost known moon of the gas giant. Its mean diameter is only about 25 miles. Very little is known about this moon so far. Europa, on the other hand, we already know from the spectacular images taken by the Jupiter space probe Juno. Jupiter's best known moon is the second innermost satellite of the gas giant and measures about 1,940 miles in diameter. Europa is an icy moon and currently one of the most promising candidates for life beyond Earth. Under a thick layer of ice, researchers suspect larger deposits of liquid water. At 60 miles in diameter, Thebe is again comparatively small and like Metis, a rather misshapen lump of rock with a conspicuously large hole. Now we have for you another special image taken by James Webb of Jupiter. We bet you've never seen the gas giant like this before. Exceeding all expectations, latest image of Jupiter. In these images, also taken at the very beginning of the James Webb telescope's career, Jupiter once again shows a changed face. Although these images appear more familiar to the human eye, there is a special filter behind this image. The auroras were made to glow by a red filter. This also makes light visible that is reflected from lower clouds and upper haze. A yellow-green filter makes the veil swirling around the north and south poles visible to researchers on Earth for the first time. Blue light filtering reveals light reflected from a deeper main cloud. The Great Red Spot, the most gigantic cyclone in Jupiter's atmosphere, appears white here rather than the usual red. Brightness indicates a high altitude. The Great Red Spot thus rises clearly above the surrounding clouds, as previously suspected. The fact that the equatorial region also appears bright indicates that bands of clouds and winds there also rise clearly above the surrounding structures. Dark bands in areas north of the equatorial region provide evidence of less dense cloud cover. In addition, the planet's fine ring system and two moons can also be seen in this fantastic and razor-sharp image. Amalthea and Andrastea are among the less explored moons of Jupiter. In the blackness of space, even faint white galaxies can be seen at incredible distances in this image. Commenting on these brand new images of Jupiter, planetary scientist Imke de Pater of the University of California at Berkeley said, we really didn't expect the images from the new telescope to be this good. So James Webb is already wowing the world of science. And yet, the telescope has been in operation for less than six months. Hubble already significantly changed the way we see space during its 30 years of service and the James Webb Telescope will provide even more intense and exciting insights. Hubble vs. Webb We conclude the video by looking at what new features the James Webb Telescope will bring and comparing some images from the two space telescopes. James Webb not only looks very different from its colleague Hubble, but there are also far more cameras and measurement sensors on board the new telescope. Hubble was launched into space in 1990 Think about what cell phones looked like in 1990 and what they look like today. It's much the same with the two telescopes. Of course, James Webb in the 2020s has very different capabilities than Hubble from the 1990s. James Webb's 21-foot diameter mirrors allow deeper views into space than any telescope before. Hubble's primary mirror is only 7.9 feet in size, and yet this telescope was already providing unique views of the cosmos. Hubble's deep field image from 2012 allowed researchers to look back almost to the Big Bang, but only almost. Webb provided a much sharper and deeper image right at the beginning of its operational lifetime. In the reddish color spectrum, the oldest galaxies in the universe and those that should not exist according to the Big Bang theory can be seen. Webb's deep field image, which can look to within a few million years of the previously assumed Big Bang, is much more curved than Hubble's image. This is due to gravitational lensing, which makes older galaxies and those further back in the image visible in the first place. 
In 2008, people on Earth were delighted to see this image of the Northwest Carina Nebula. This summer, we marveled at this image from James Webb. The color brilliance and detailed sharpness delighted amateur stargazers and scientists alike. Thanks to Hubble, we were able to admire the incredibly beautiful Southern Ring Nebula for the first time in 1998. This summer, these images from the new telescope just took our breath away. And that was just the beginning. James Webb will be bringing us exciting new images and insights from the depths of space every month. We'll be sure to stay tuned. We'll keep you up to date on all the new discoveries from the James Webb Telescope. Tell us what you think about the possibilities of this new technology and the never-before-seen views of Jupiter. As always, write us your opinions, ideas, and views in the comments. We look forward to you checking back with us soon. Until next time, at Simply Space.